the shape. It kind of looks like BB-8. <laughs> Why is that significant? Well, this is really fascinating. So um, this the is where a lot of the excitement came in yesterday in when uh, they had the press conference the farthest, revealed the images. There was cheers all around um, because the, the snowman shape um, out there. confirms a theory. It's the first serious evidence of a theory of how planets form. And that's what made it so incredible. Planets have been thought to form by a process called accretion. Kathy Olkin from the Southwest Research Institute and part of the New Horizons team studies this and she was blown away by the results. But this shape it informs our models of planetary formation. You can see that they're clearly two separate objects that have come together. There's no strong neck in between each object. So it's, it's pretty exciting to see that. I think this is exactly what we need to move the, the modeling work on planetary formation forward because we're seeing evidence right here for accreting objects and then having them combine. And so the theory is, is that, um, again, the, the, this would have happened about 4.6 billion years ago, where you'd have small Four pebbles point. as part of the early solar system that would stick together slowly over time, accumulate into larger structures, and then larger structures would develop some kind of microgravity, which would bring them closer together, and then slowly grow into some of them, eight of them to be exact, grew into planets, and then many others sort of grew only till the size of Ultima Thule and then it kind of just was a failed planet, you know, a failed sort of structure um, and then just has now been floating around in space ever since. But how do these two lobes actually like stick together? Well, so now they're one object, um, so they are melded together, but this is this idea of accretion. So gravity is what kept them together in the first place. So they are going through space really quickly. Right, but actually relative to one another, these two separate pieces, when they were separate pieces, would have been kind of strolling around each other, really literally walking at about a human stroll pace. So they're kind of circling around each other, checking each other out. Then their slight amounts of gravity would slowly bring them together. They'd sit by side by side for who knows, maybe a few millennia, and then slowly become a unified structure and meld together. And these are, you know, Ultima Thule as an entire object is about 32 kilometers long, 16 kilometers wide. So it's pretty big. It has some gravitational uh, pressure to it. Um, and so at, at some point they had enough to just kind of bring them together and then kind of fuse. Hmm. Is there anything, anything else that they could uh, tell by the images that they have been sent back? They could, and this was really fascinating, is one of the first things that they noticed um, when they first released the images yesterday was, yes, it's a snowman shape, mm -hmm. and also it's kind of red, reddish, sort of a burnt light orangey color. Um, and that's really interesting because the color is um, generated by molecules in space. And because, again, this Ultima Thule likely formed early on in the evolution of the solar system, this is giving us a window into what kinds of molecules were actually present when the solar system formed. And Kathy Olkin from the Southwest Research Institute is now spearheading the color group um, that are researching these images. Color also informs us about the composition of the surface. And so we see red areas and less red areas. And the red looks very indicative of Boland's um, processed volatile ices that have been irradiated by energetic flux. And so that's one way to make that red material that we see. And so the idea here is that these organic compounds that would have formed in these, particularly these foreign ices, so ice on Ultima Thule, which we know is there, it's not water. Um, but it's these foreign ices made of maybe frozen methane, frozen nitrogen, those kinds of things um, that are allowing, again, a window into our early solar system. So what's next? So much data left to mm. come in. Uh, they're expecting 20 months of continual around the clock, almost streaming in of data from New Horizons as it continues to fly further and further away from us. It's already 5 million kilometers past Ultima Thule and increasing as it goes. Um, so it takes 20 months to get this all back. Uh, the next real steps, clear steps in the coming week is going to be the geography, the topography, the sort of shape of it and more detail there, and also the composition. So more of the data of the, some of the instrumentation on board, but 
New Horizons is working absolutely perfectly, sending back data absolutely as expected. So we expect to have a treasure trove of data soon. All right, looking forward to talking more about it. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks so much, Tora. You're welcome. That is our science columnist, Tora Kutcher.